Hello everyone. My name is Taylor Alexander. Professionally, I'm a robotics engineer, but today I want to talk about mechanical ventilators and the coronavirus. Uh, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, an area that is currently under lockdown and about to be hit hard by the coronavirus. It seems to me, from what I've heard, if we don't get enough mechanical ventilators, we will have a lot of people dying that otherwise could be saved. I've done some research this morning. My basic findings show that, if my research is correct, a simple mechanical ventilator that could be quickly manufactured is within our grasp. It seems possible, but I don't really know. I've uh, looked, up, looked up respirators on the internet. I've watched YouTube training videos for doctors and uh, medical students that seem to show something that wouldn't have to be that complicated to manufacture. I'm concerned that the existing device manufacturers won't be able to spin up in time to produce their normal medical devices. But if we have a major crisis on our hands in a week or 10 days, we may be willing to uh, go with the bare minimum that would function. That's something I think we could manufacture quickly and in mass. This is a video where I describe what I found. At this point, I'd like to find medical professionals who can, who can help confirm my assumptions about the basic operation of the device and what would be useful. I don't know if simply mechanical ventilators is enough. I don't know what we really need. And there's no place for me to ask except to come here and say, does anyone know? Can we figure this out? There's still time to do something. Um, this is a rover, my 3D printed robot. This is another robot I designed for a classroom environment. Uh, I've got circuit boards here I designed, and these 3D printed things on a high resolution resin printer that I have. I have six 3D printers at home. I'm a robotics prototype engineer professionally. I, I can make something. I need medical professionals who can confirm what the basic principles of operation are for a mechanical ventilator. Uh, and, 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 and is that needed? Do we need a quick and easy to manufacture mechanical ventilator? Do we have enough intubation equipment at the hospital such that only uh, a, a, you know, a high and low air pressure device would be sufficient? So this is my introduction to this video. And if any of that seems interesting to you, please watch the rest of what I've got to say and um, let me know what you think. So I'm a robotics engineer with a lot of a particular experience in prototyping things really quickly. And it's starting to dawn on me that in a week or two, we might have massive numbers of people dying due to lack of access to mechanical ventilators. At least I've heard that. It's something I'm trying to figure out. Well, if that's true, we should be doing everything we can to try to fix that. I hear that California has some thousands of ventilators on order, but many thousands more are needed. And so the question comes to mind, could we quickly design an easy to fabricate ventilator? Would it help? That's what I'd like to figure out. So this morning I did a bunch of research on um, what, uh, what ventilators are supposed to do. And uh, I've got some diagrams here I'm gonna go over in just a moment. Um, I'd like to get the internet's help. Can we make something that will save thousands of lives? Can we make a cheap, easy to manufacture ventilator that would be useful? Is the ventilator what's missing? Uh, from my research this morning, it seems that for the coronavirus, an external mask like a CPAP or BiPAP is uh, potentially not sufficient for coronavirus. Um, it looks like uh, intubation, a tube going into the air passages, is important uh, to, to then be hooked up to a ventilator to do mechanical ventilation on people who are suffering from symptoms related to the coronavirus infection. So my hope is that potentially the hospitals have enough of the intubation equipment uh, and potentially the filters that go with that. And if that's the case, I feel like it may be possible to actually uh, manufacture a cheap mechanical ventilator 
with a, a simple electronic control that would, uh, I, I don't know, maybe help, maybe actually be useful. And, and realistically, something that we could start manufacturing in five days and have a few thousand of them available um, uh, a few days after that. And um, it, it would take a lot of help from people on the internet, but this is the time. This is the time to do something. So many of us are home. Uh, we could be organizing. We could be working together. Um, so for my initial research, one of the most important things I found is that it looks like the... Uh, it looks like the ventilation is, is all positive pressure. This is something I would like somebody to answer, to either uh, confirm or, or, or dispel this idea that it's only positive pressure that's needed. So if you only need positive pressure, um, you might be able to use uh, an air compressor with a tank and a pressure regulator. And you could actually send a lot of hoses out from that air compressor. You could go to a small uh, manifold, a small pressure manifold, with two mechanical valves on it and a single electronic valve. The two pressure regulators, the two valves, you'd have a low pressure and a high pressure. And there'd be a simple electronic uh, uh, valve that would switch, and would open up the high pressure. What this would do is it would give you, um, when the valve is closed, you would get low pressure coming out of the unit this is for when the patient is exhaling because you still want to maintain positive pressure from my understanding, from what I found. Um, and then when the, the patient needs to inhale, you can flip on the higher pressure. Um, and that would then feed higher pressure into their lungs. And then um, either using a sensor on their body for when they're breathing or using a timer, you could then uh, switch off the high pressure valve and again you get low pr positive pressure so that then the person could exhale. Um, so I have a few questions about this. One of the questions I have is, um, is my understanding correct? Is it true that you have a high pressure and a low pressure and electronic switch to cycle between them and that the, um, the, the nurse or the ventilator operator uh, uses uh, that, that they adjust the pressure and pay attention to the vitals of the patient and that that the machine's job is only to cycle um, either on a timer or it sounds like a sensor may be needed but I feel like a sensor for for that could be devised as well um, and then as far as fabricating these cheaply it seems to me that it may be possible to make a 3d printed mold where you could then cast copies of something um, you maybe would uh, make a 3D printed mold and then um, you could, might cast a silicone negative from that. You could make 10, 20, 30 silicone negatives off of this and then you could be casting the body of the main device out of a simple resin plastic available widely. Um, and so the question I have is, does any of this make sense? Could we do it quickly? Uh, there's other potential ways of fabricating something, um, whether it's CNC machining or uh, laser cutting is a very fast process. Uh, so I, I, I think that if, if the mechanical principles that I've addressed here, if these are what's needed, if, if, if simple devices which can alternate between high and low pressure uh, using a sensor, if, if this would help, I believe that part can be fabricated. So then the other question, a lot of people to me, they're skeptical that I've spoken to. They say, well, um, yeah, but we couldn't get the approvals in time. I mean, this is, a, this is an emergency. And uh, I heard the FDA approved a drug in 24 hours. So uh, obviously nobody's going to approve my theory at this point in time. But if I could find other people, medical professionals, who would confirm that the basic principles are sound, and other engineers and fabricators who want to help prototype this with me, uh, in five days' time, we'll have both a much more urgent need for an immediate solution, which would make administrators uh, willing to work with uh, something new, uh, and, um, you know, evidence that uh, what we're talking about would actually help. So I want to find medical professionals and engineers who can assist with this, medical professionals who can confirm the need here and the basic principles of operation. So is my assumption that more mechanical ventilators will help, will reduce deaths, is that valid? Is the other equipment, the intubation equipment, is that available already? Is there enough of that? Um, 
and um, and then the you know so so uh, then can we fabricate something quickly? And if it's simply uh, an electronic device which can provide two pressures, it seems to me that we can come up with an emergency measure here. Uh, and although now it seems weird or remote that a real hospital would actually use these, and these must be used in a real hospital setting with professionals. These cannot be used at home. From my understanding, there's, uh, there's, there's too many variables and a professional operator is required. My only hope is to come up with a machine that is easy to use for an operator. Um, because it's extremely cheap and easy to manufacture in mass. Um, those are some of the questions I have. Um, it, so although it seems remote now that that might be used in a, in a real hospital setting, if we are in dire circumstances in a week or ten days, uh, we might be open to more options, including the options of, um, you know, quickly fabricated devices. This is what I'd like to find out. Now, I've uh, roughly described the principles of operation of a ventilator that I think might work. I'd like to go over the diagrams in person, uh, or, or in a close-up. Um, so I'm going to switch to a close-up, and I'm going to talk about the actual principles of operation for a simple, electronically switchable, high-pressure, low-pressure device. Okay, so I'm going to start with this most uh, abstract diagram here. One of the benefits of a machine that doesn't have the pump on board is that if you uh, attach to a regular, potentially a regular air compressor, which are abundant devices, you could then supply uh, many feed lines to a bunch of the devices that I'm going to talk about. These would be basically a pressure manifold, which would then attach to normal intubation equipment, and you could serve with a single air compressor and a uh, pressure regulated feed which is then modulated here you could uh, you could address many patients um, essentially what I'm talking about in this system diagram is that you would first start with regulated air pressure input now again this may seem counterintuitive but my understanding from the research is that actually the ventilators would provide simply a high pressure and a low pressure which would cycle with an electronic valve but uh, no negative pressures are needed, which is why a simple air compressor is, uh, with, a, with a pressure tank and a pressure regulator would be all that's needed to feed into this device. Now I'm imagining that this would all be in a single device, a single manifold. Um, what you would have is a regulated pressure input that's not, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, slightly above the maximum that you would want. Um, you feed into a high pressure regulator. Uh, you have some kind of pressure gauge. So you then, this would be a, a valve or a, a mechanical thing that, that the, um, the operator would adjust for the, the desired high pressure that you want. You also have a low pressure regulator with a one-way valve here um, and an electronic valve here. That would then uh, simply have a, that would be, as this valve was cycled, you would have cycling high and low pressure output. I'll show a little more diagram on the next page, but first let me just discuss this. So you have high pressure uh, or, or line pressure coming in here, um, and then this pressure regulator is designed for the, des the patient's desired uh, maximum pressure, and then the, uh, the, the, the patient's desired low pressure here. When the electronic valve is closed, only low pressure feeds to the patient. When the electronic valve is open, then high pressure feeds into the patient and it does not backflow here. Uh, because there's a one-way valve and in fact you don't strictly need this one-way valve because if you have high highest pressure here then this would not backflow with this regulated output so uh, now on to a little bit messier but the first diagram i created um, you have an air compressor going to a regulator um, that would go into two pressure regulators you can actually make a mechanical pressure valve using only water and tubes although uh, it seems a little cumbersome, and if, if, a, if a lot of pr little mechanical pressure valves are available, that would be better. Um, you could have a servo or other, other kind of uh, mechanical device to activate this electronic valve, or you might have a, a proper electronic valve here. Um, this would then go into a heat and moisture exchanger um, plus filters. Heat and moisture exchanger is normally used for intubation, and I'm hoping these might be available in hospitals, otherwise something would need to be devised. Uh, finally, you have the expiratory circuit, which is um, 
uh, seems to me some kind of uh, uh, valve that lets the person breathe out, and that would go into the, the individual. Um, questions are, I think the biggest question is, do we need this? I don't actually know if any of this would be helpful. Um, what is the maximum pressure that we would want? So maybe 30 centimeters of water. Um, how could this be designed such that it's easily washable? And is that important? Uh, you know, this expiratory circuit might keep this device from being exposed to anything, but uh, at the same time, it would be safest if this could be something that could be washed. Uh, and then what are the filters like? So that's what I've got so far. I don't know if any of this would be worthwhile. I think a lot of people will say, there's no way you can help. But at the same time, we've got to do everything we can. And although it feels impossible, if the mechanism itself is very simple, I do believe we could manufacture them in mass, that we could make thousands of them if necessary. I'd like to work with other people, figure out what design would be appropriate, if any. Uh, if somebody else can help me nail down the mechanical principles of operation that would be most helpful, uh, I feel confident in being able to design something that would be easily manufacturable. Uh, and it would be fantastic if other engineers could chip in here. So I've started a thread on my website, which is reboot.love. You'll see the coronavirus thread. If you just go to reboot.love in your browser, there's also a link at the bottom of this video. Uh, in that link, you'll also see the uh, YouTube videos I used for research, which kind of describe these principles of operation. So it'll give you some sense that uh, uh, what I'm talking about is reasonable. This is a very important time. If there's anything we can do to help, I believe we can and should do it. Thank you.